The following is a Samsung production. It's time now for the Sam LaSant Show. With your host, Sam LaSant. A Samsung production. Well, welcome everyone to the Sam LaSant Show, and I'm on location here at the 2005 Pocono Mountain Film Festival, and um, we're going to be interviewing some people here on the, uh, the Sam LaSant Show. Well, now listen, folks, I feel a little embarrassed now, because the guy I'm going to interview right now, uh, he only interviewed, it is so far in his lifetime, 300,000 guests. Yeah, 300,000 guests, and I'm a little way behind there, but let me just tell you, people, people who work for him, let me give you some of the names, Bette Midler. Barry Mandelow, Woody Allen, Dustin Hoffman, Barbara Streisand, Bill Cosby, Liza Minnella. These are some people that work for this guy. You all know him out here in northeastern central Pennsylvania. He is definitely an icon. I met him last year at the 2004 Pocono Mountain Film Festival. And um, he's sort of a guy like I like to uh, mimic to a degree because he's a fabulous interviewer. Uh, his name is Joe Franklin. Joe? Sam, let me tell you why this is a double thrill, a triple thrill for me because when I was a kid a few years ago, you know, many years ago, you were my role model. You, <laughs> you were my mentor and I said to myself, someday I want to be like Sam Lasante hey, and I guess what? Huh? And here I am alongside him and it's, uh, this is something that, uh, I mean, I wouldn't sell you a friendship for a hundred dollars and I mean that. <laughs> 110, 110, I'd be Come tempted. On, give me a tempted. break here, 120 bucks. Joe, I, I remember uh, many, many years watching you at home in little town of parties, a little patch town outside of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, watching Joe Franklin and, and uh, admired your style. Uh, and um, I have a talk show, of course, you're on, but I have a set, you know. But you were, the, you're like, you, you are, you are the pioneer of the format talk show. Oh, well, I was uh, just on radio. I was about uh, 16 or 17 years old at my own radio show and I get a phone call one day from Channel 7. They said, Joe, we're lighting up now in the daytime. TV was only on there from 5 o'clock at night till sermonette. There was no daytime TV. They said, we like your style, we like your voice on the radio, and we're considering giving you an hour a day in TV. I said, I'll try it. What well, I got to lose, right? So they said, what kind of format? Would you, if we give you the hour a day, Joe, what kind of show would you do? I said, how about I do a show of people talking, eyeball to eyeball, nose to nose? They said, Joe, you're out of your mind. You can't do a talk show. The word is television. You got to give them, got to give them vision. You got to give them seltzer bottles, pratfalls, baggy pants. Got to burlesque. You can't, you can't do a talk show. So I said, well, if I can't do a talk show, I said, well, how about if I do? Because rock and roll was coming in. I said, how about if I do a show of kids dancing to records? He said, Joe, you're out of your mind. Who's going to watch kids dance to music? To who comes along? Dick Clark becomes a billionaire. Of course, yeah, yeah. So then I said, well, how about if I do a show of people singing old time songs? I love old. There's no one's going to watch people sing old songs. With a little ball bouncing up and down. Who comes along? Mitch Miller yeah, singing along is. with Mitch. He go. becomes a billionaire. Yeah. But I defied them, Sam. I did what I considered to be what I think was the first pure, organic, from the bones TV talk show. I yes. Since then, 500,000, I'm in the Guinness Book of World Records, 500,000 interviews. 500,000, this had 300,000. That was last week. That was last week. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you know, uh, and, uh, you have your, your producer here, and I'm going to talk to him in a little bit, but you know, um, I've been doing a talk show since probably, I started in 1970, but really around 1993, starting uh, with Jack Palance, we were doing the show. But uh, there... There's a skill t to what you do, and I'm, I'm learning the skill. I'm not as really near as you, where no, your stature. But um, when you're talking to people, trying to get people to expose themselves or talk about things, what's the, what's the talent do you have? Because I mean, the, the main thing, I think, is to look into their eyes and you know, don't look into their nose or their belly button and get, get them to relax. Sometimes they're on the air kind of against their will. They'd rather, they're on belligerently. They're on grudgingly. They'd rather be home. Uh, typing out the next book, but the, the the editor says, you want to sell books? You got to make the rounds of TV talk shows. So you got to sort of, and I've, I've always said the main thing, you know, during the time I was on TV, 500 talk show hosts came and went while I was on. 500 came and went. So the, the mortality rate in our field is staggering. It's, it's, uh, I've always said, and Rick Russo will agree, the main ingredient is sincerity. Sincerity. And once you learn to fake that, once you learn to fake sincerity, 
Then, then you got it made. Well, there's not faking sincerity, but that's you're so true. You're so true. The what I found from watching you, okay, and I'd love to be able to come on your radio station. I love what it. I what I found from watching you is that is is that exactly sincerity, letting the person that you're talking to be the star, not you, okay, because they're the star on you your. You know what store. else is very important, Sam? Get the plug out of the way fast. If you don't plug the book or the movie or the record at the beginning, they're, they're nervous, nervous. Yeah. When, when, we get, when we get around to the plug. So Leno does book. that. He, Leno stretches that out. You notice that? Really? He doesn't, I mean, he doesn't come out with the, he'll wait to the very last segment and say, all right, now tell us about this movie you're in. You know, I can yeah, just yeah, do yeah. Um, All right, now, I said, you you know, Bette Midler, Mary, uh, Barry Manlow, all these people that work for you. You started, what, over 43 years ago? I started, no, I started about not 51 years ago. 51 years. Yeah. But you've been on television for, uh, what, 40, 40 years? Well, yeah, 43 and a half <laughs> years so far. All right, now, I asked Robert Vaughn this question in one of my shows, uh, and I know this is a difficult question, because someone asked me today, Sammy, who was, who was the, you know, one of the most exciting interviews you ever had? You had over 500,000, so my God, I know it's going to be a... But some of the people that you interviewed that you found very interesting. Well, I had five U.S. presidents. Did I mention that? No. I had... Uh, Who are the five presidents? Ronald Reagan, five times, but never as president. I no. when he was three times he was hosting a program called Death Valley Days. Yes. Sponsored by 20 Mule Team Borax. Twice he was doing a program called uh, GE Theater as host. And he came on one time with a book called Where's the Rest of Me? That was his famous line from the movie King's Row. I didn't even ask him for an autograph. I didn't... I mean, he's just another actor. Uh -huh. And the next year he auditioned, he told me he auditioned for the part of, uh, was it, uh, well, governor the first day, he auditioned for the part of president. Didn't get the role, but he got a call back later on. Mm -hmm. And he got the job. I, I had uh, Jimmy Carter, I had Nixon twice, I had Gerald Ford, and uh, who did I leave? I had Bill Clinton about four times, and probably one more that I forgot. And I, I had, I gave the first exposure ever to people like uh, Bill Cosby and, uh, uh, yeah. Michael Jackson five times with the Jackson family. Wow. Little beautiful kid. And uh, I had uh, the pleasure of reading in a magazine about a month ago a list of people who never did a talk show. It said, it said, it said Charlie Chaplin was never on a talk show. It said, it said John Wayne was never on a talk show. It said Cary Grant, the ones who were, never were on. I had, I, I had the photographs with those people. The only one I didn't have is Greta Garbo. I wanted Greta Garbo. She wouldn't appear on anybody's talk show, mm -hmm. but I... But it couldn't, I think my favorite, she was my favorite, Sam. It might be Bing Crosby. I had Frank Sinatra four times. Bing, I always thought of Bing as being what you call mechanically reproduced. I thought of Bing on movies, on television, on radio, on records. When he walked toward me flesh and blood, mm -hmm. I think that day I melted. I did my, I did my all time best. And Bing, in private life, you know, Bing was quite aloof. He was, he was a little icy, a little cold. But that day with me, he was so warm and loving and just, he could have been any man in the street. Mm -hmm. In fact, after the show, he goes down the street, he, goes, he says to a girl, he says, my name is Crosby. Want to go on the road with me? Just to me, he was, he was so happy that day. Mm -hmm. He took a ride on a subway train. I got the picture of Bing on a ride on a subway train with a man, a billionaire, you know? You find these people when you were interviewing them, guys like Sinatra and the people that you mentioned. Uh, uh, how do you find them uh, interviewing them? Were, were they? Did you feel like um, they didn't want to be there, or they they were begrudgingly, like you said, there, or or did they enjoy being? I think they enjoyed being with me. They yeah. enjoyed being with me. First and, of all, uh, how could you not enjoy being with you? Right. I mean, I try to get them to forget it's an interview. Look in their eyes. Yeah. The main thing is eye contact. Yeah. You got a, I don't, you got a great eye contact. You, you can't. You got to. You got to. Let them know that they're important, and uh, the main thing is to uh, is to uh, I tell them before the show, don't leave your wallet in the dressing room. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, <laughs> don't bump into the furniture on the way. And I tell young actors, lie on the back of the resume, make up some lies on the way. So <laughs> <laughs> your producer's laughing over here. Right. I'm gonna take a break and come back, folks. I'm talking to Joe Franklin. This guy, he talks about me being. He's a funny guy. He's, he said I'm his mentor. Bull. This guy is my mentor. He's been around for 43 years, 43 consecutive years, over 500,000 guests, doing what I'm doing today. I'm just a drop in a bucket, but uh, I love the guy. He's doing. He's a fabulous person. I'm going to come back and talk a little bit more about Joe and then talk about his producer. He has a f radio show. He has nostalgia. He's probably one of the leading guys in the world with nostalgia. He has movies he's selling. This guy is just jam-packed, and he's only... What, 27? And at night I drive my cab. As a cab driver, I've been, I've been hailed by millions. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. <laughs> <laughs>
Folks, I'm here on location. Uh, 2005 Pocono Film Festival is a fabulous event. And uh, <clears throat> as you know, I talked to many guests. I was honored this year to be the master of ceremonies. But speaking with me now uh, is uh, Joe Franklin. And he's the, the main man of the, the, the talk format. I'm going to talk to his producer radio show, uh, Rick uh, Russo, pretty soon. Joe, you had over 500,000 guests before you mentioned about some famous people, uh, Michael Jackson's, you know, all these famous people. Do you know, like Dustin Hoffman? Did I, how do they? Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Now, do they remember Joe Franklin? That's a good question. I didn't mean to get heavy, but uh, the answer is not usually, because I symbol, I represent to them the time when they were broke, and if they see me, they're very uh, sadly reminded of those days, and they don't want to remember those days. So if they see me walking down the street, they'll sometimes go on the other side of the street. You are kidding me. Yeah, that's how it is. Just yeah. a matter. Yeah. Bill Cosby always comes back. Bill is the nicest. Bill. If I had to name one of my favorite discoveries, the man always comes back. And Garth Brooks comes back, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me think, well, most of them, most of them don't come back. That's, that's very profound question because you know and, and uh, I can imagine how you must feel because there's many times where I've interviewed a lot of people nowhere near I've interviewed I've been very blessed to interview a lot of celebrities you're one of my top uh, but you wonder why you would think that they would want to come back to a guy like Joe Franklin who gave them an opportunity who gave them that uh, but yet you, you're right it reminds them of when they were nobodies but that the people that come back are are above that Broadway is the longest street with the shortest memory, memory. yeah there's a broken heart for every light on Broadway you, you, need, you need big big binoculars to find gratitude in show business yeah. I don't mean I don't want to sound bitter or, no I, I don't want to sound cynical but that's how it is they yeah. forget and you love New York how many people do you think have come to me through the years and they said, Joe, let's make a banquet in your honor. We'll, we'll book the Grand Ballroom and the World of Astoria, and we'll get all your protégés. We'll get Barbara Streisand and Bette Midler and Woody Allen. They think you're just going to make a phone call and Tony Bennett. They don't come. They, they don't come. They, they, they've got their own lives, and, and God bless them. I, I, it's like I asked Joan Blundell once. I said, Joan, I said, your husband, Dick Powell, is now married to uh, June Allison. You know what she said? I had him first. Uh, that's, that's, that's my view. I had the world first. Yeah. Well, you, you're you're still going. You're going strong, and um, you know you go to your website. Uh, just go to Google or Yahoo. Did Joe? Fra What's your website anyway? Uh, Joe, Joe Franklin. Dot com. Memory Lane. What's it, Rick? Uh, we're actually revamping it uh, now. It's JoeFranklin.com. Okay. And, uh, we're redoing the entire website and uh, uh, bringing everything up. To well, I went to the website. This is Joe. It's, this is Rick Russo. His uh, producer is whatever. He's another Joe Franklin. Um, I want to talk about the radio show. But when I went to the website, I finally had the, the, the music playing and uh, a lot of great things about it. But uh, let's talk about his radio show. You're the producer of the radio show. When is it on? What does it do? And all that other stuff. First of all, Sam, thank you for having me. And uh, you can't imagine what an honor and privilege it is to uh, work with this uh, TV and radio legend. I can't imagine. I'd love to be. I, I love going to New York. I wish I could see this guy once a month just to be with him because I can learn so much, just, just like I learned so much from Jack Palance and, mm -hmm. still, and still am. Right. Well, Joe Franklin is hotter than ever, let me tell you that. Uh, he's booked solid with speaking engagements, lectures at various colleges and universities, making appearances all over town. And uh, it's just a ball, uh, you know, hanging out with Joe and doing this great work. And uh, I had the great privilege of working on uh, Memory Lane, Joe Franklin's Memory Lane Talk program. Memory Lane, what is it? it, it Memory Lane is just uh, the most eclectic radio program uh, ever in that uh, Joe brought together people from all walks of life to discuss lifestyle, to discuss music, theater, all kinds of topics, and playing and and preserving the music of the 20s and the 30s, the Eddie Cantor uh, wow. programs. Rick and, I, Rick and I have Sophie a theory, Tucker. Sam. I mean, you can't knock what's current, but we have a theory that half the population is what you might call musically disenfranchised. They, they, they don't understand rap and rock and acid rock and, and uh, hip hop. They don't, so when I, when I play them, uh, Al Jolson, Eddie Cantor, Frank Sinatra, Rudy Valley, Kate Smith, that's their reason for living. What do we want to be when we grow up, Joe? Well, I'm not going to quit what I'm doing until until I get it right. I, yeah, well, I've you... been around for a long time, and I'm I'm just uh, getting warmed up now. You you are uh, you, you produce um, the, the radio show, right? Now, do you do get the guests together, or do you have? have and certainly, I'm a little disappointed with you because last year you promised me you were going to interview me on your radio, I and I figured I'd hit it big. I kept getting your butler. The butler says, "No, more, Mr. S Mr. Sam isn't accepting any more calls from Joe Franklin." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. now, listen, I have your card. I'm going to track you down. I want to be on that radio I'm show. I'm ready. The minute uh, you are, okay. Sam. Anything else new, exciting? What's happening with Joe? Rick? Well, like I said, Joe Franklin is hotter than ever. We're revamping the website, mm -hmm. Joe Franklin Productions. 
mm-hmm. and uh, I'm having a ball archiving all of Joe's uh, uh, TV shows. Uh, yeah, the vintage, mm-hmm. mo- uh, the vintage movie classics. Now, did you do those? Are you? Are you? Are, yeah. We're, are they uh, out there now? Can we buy them? We're working on that now. There's going to be the best of Joe Franklin yeah. DVD series. Fabulous. And With uh, Bob Hope. Milton Berle, Dick Crosby. Clark. How was uh, Milton Berle? Nuts like was, uh, when he was on t- He was a wonderful man. Yeah. yeah. He, was, he used to call Henny Youngman the fee for bad gags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember Henny Youngman? Yeah, oh, sure. Yeah, the one liner. Take my wife, please. Right, you know. right. I saw him in person in Atlantic City, I guess maybe a year before he died, Henny Youngman. And you think, you know, you, you, he's so blah with the violin, you never think you'd laugh, and all of a sudden, he has you pop it. You know, you're you're really having a Rodney Dangerfield made his very last appearance on our all night radio Did show. He really? Yeah. He came down in short pants, straight out with his Santa's. beautiful yeah, white Santa's sandals. Right. He says to me, he says that when he was a kid, he went to Coney Island with his parents and he got lost. And he said to the policeman, Do you think I'll be able to find my parents? Uh, officer? The officer says, Well, there were so many places they could hide. <laughs> <laughs> he was so <laughs> Anything else you have to, any other great stories yet? Because I hate to break this uh, segment up. It's just, I, I enjoy talking with you. Any other exciting well, things you can tell our viewers? I can only say that uh, the best is yet to come. Today's talk shows, I think, have gotten a little mean spirited. It got a little, little mm-hmm. cruel today's talk, mm-hmm. talk Why shows. Why is that, Joe? I don't know. You, you can't knock what's current. I guess you can't knock. Uh, Jay Leno, David, they're all, they're all wonderful, but a little, a little mean. Have you noticed, Joe, uh, something that I've seen, uh, and believe me, I'm not even comparing you know, Leno and Letterman, but I noticed, uh, as I asked Robert Vaughn about the political, you know, how the actors these days are getting more involved with politics, and I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but you notice Letterman has a, has a little agenda going for himself, and Leno has a, and I don't know if that's a good thing. Can't hurt. I, it's, uh, I don't think the audience pays much attention to it anyhow. No, no. Uh, they 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 feel a little bit self-important when they yeah. when they uh, when they uh, put forth their own political view. I think Al Franken is exciting to watch. Uh, yeah. And uh, the talk shows today uh, tend to uh, overemphasize the youth appeal. Uh-huh. I think. I mean, you want to go on the show if you're somebody important. They, they just want a young actress with long legs mm-hmm. or, or a hot leading man. I think they're leaving out a lot of... Uh, well, how about substance? We forget about substance they don't anymore? appeal to anybody over the age of 35. The theory is that if you're over 35, you're not going to change your brand of dog food or your yeah. car. Or, and they're so wrong. It's definitely wrong. You know, you're talking about people uh, in, uh, 35 plus that have a lot of major purchasing a power. Expendable power. Yeah. They, they, yeah. it, I think it happened in one season. They took off all those shows in one season, Sam. Even though they were number one in their time spots and had the highest rating, they took off in one year. Ed Sullivan, Jackie Gleason, George Goble, uh, Dean Martin, who else? Uh, Red Skelton, I mean, uh, Danny Kaye, Tom they, Jones. Uh, all in one season. Yeah. And they, you know, I miss those variety yep, shows. That's right. Yeah. They, they, they you want, don't see variety shows anymore. Nah, it's a you know, world. around the holidays, you'd see some, a lot of holidays, but you don't see them anymore. I have been involved in the entertainment business for over 25 years uh, with the New York State Council on the Arts, and that's how I actually first met Joe, was producing special events. And Joe was the very first King Neptune in the Coney Island Mermaid Parade. <laughs> and that uh, <laughs> was a great, great day. And, uh, we also produced the uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh-huh. when we brought back the Brooklyn Paramount for a special event in downtown right. Brooklyn. That was in 1993. Uh, so now, is there uh, anyone that he doesn't know? No. All right. Well, at least he knows <laughs> me now. I'm a, I, I'm, I got his phone number. I give him a call and say, "All right, Joe, I'm coming on the radio station." Joe, it's a pleasure. Please invite me back. Anytime, my friend. It's it's a pleasure. Rick, nice, nice to meeting see you. Okay. Thank you. My pressure. My pressure. Okay. <laughs> Your pressure. <laughs> Folks, uh, I'm Sam Lasad, and we'll be back right after this. We're here at the uh, 2005 Pocono Film Festival, and uh, we have some more for you. Stay with us. Go back, folks. You're watching the Sam LaSant Show, and I can't tell you how happy I was to talk to Joe Franklin. What a great guy he is. Now, um, we're here at the Pocono Film Festival. One of the things they do is they produce independent films. Uh, one of the films up here tonight for an award, uh, hopefully an award, is The Signs of the Cross. The producer, director? Writer. Writer. John Reedy's here. And actor. A, a, an actor. And we also have, if you remember The Sopranos, uh, uh, Tony Lip. This is the guy from The Sopranos, okay? I, I, I'm going to teach him a couple things in a little bit. But, <laughs> but here, uh, uh, that's right. Uh, the Signs of the Cross, right? Uh, okay. the Cross. Tell, us, tell us about this independent Signs of the Cross is actually a uh, film based on my life. Uh, 
It brings from my childhood in the Catholic Church straight up through my adult life. Uh, it talks about uh, my trials and tribulations in the uh, church, in, my, in the school I went to, and the alcoholism, the abuse of my home, uh, how I uh, turned into an alcoholic myself and uh, went into recovery. And I'm um, sober 23 years now because of uh, AA and the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about it. I mean, it's, it's your life, okay, but what, what are you asking, what would you think the people who would watch this film, what do you want them to get out of it? I want, what I want them to get out of it is that, uh, that there is one God, okay? Uh, I was taught at a young age that God was only in the Catholic Church, and I found out that God's in all the churches. He's in the Baptist Church, he's in the Methodist Church, the Lutheran Church, he's in all the churches. But I, was, I wasn't taught that as a, at a young age. I was taught that God was only in the Catholic Church, and uh, it led me down a wrong road because of uh, they had mortal sins, and if you ate meat on Friday, it was a mortal sin, and if you uh, missed Mass on Sunday, it was a mortal sin. So. I was going to be the best bad guy in hell because of that. Mm -hmm. Because I ate meat on Friday because we were poor. We had Leo the hot dog guy was giving me free hot dogs on Friday because nobody was buying hot dogs on Friday. Mm -hmm. I ate the hot dogs so I knew I was going to hell. I was missing mass on Sunday because my mother was getting beat up by my dad. Uh, so, you know, that's just the way it went. You know? So I found out later that God is in all the churches. Mm -hmm. He's not only in the, in the Catholic Church, but he's in, uh, mm -hmm. he's in all of them. You know, and all you have to do is ask. Just call his name and he'll deliver you. Now, John, who's in the film? Oh, I got Tony Lip is in the film. I have Dan Laurier from Wonder Years, Eileen Kristen from uh, As the World Turns, I have uh, Eileen Fulton uh, from One Life to Live, or vice versa. Um, I have uh, Chuck Zito, um, Frankie Gio. Frankie Gio. I have uh, Vinny Vella. Um, I got Joe Franklin, who was just interviewed with yeah, you. Yeah. I have uh, Mark Coppola, Christine Nagy, Anthony Mangano, um, Carol Alt, who plays the lead in my film. She was the supermodel. Um, but I got a great cast. And this film, uh, how could one see it? Uh, it's going to be playing at this festival, Pocono Film Festival, and it's also going to be playing at the Long Island International Film Expo on July 17th at 4.30. It's a Sunday. Are you um, hoping that this is going to be picked up and distributed either? Yeah, they're telling me that it's it's good enough that it will get picked up. I'm just waiting for a distribution deal with someone to come forth that, you know, can get me that distribution deal. And uh, it'll definitely be mm -hmm. probably a, a limited theatrical release or straight to DVD. Do you have a background in acting or did you just... Yeah, I, I, I've acted. I've been on a lot of the soaps. I've uh, been America's Most Wanted. Uh, if you go on to... You're on America's Most Wanted? Or <laughs> what, what, what do you mean by that? Wait a second, folks. We may we may be making some money. <laughs> My name is Jose Ramirez. <laughs> You're right. Oh, boy. Uh, but uh, you, you so you did some acting. Yes, I have, I've done acting. Yeah. Yeah. I've done acting and I started writing. And then from the writing, um, I wanted to do my own film. I've seen, I've been on enough sets that I, I figured I could do this, and uh, so I put together a feature film, then I did a short, and then I said, let me just step it up a little bit, and since I've been in the business a while, uh, grab people that I know, that I've worked with, and also uh, people that a uh, cast and director would uh, mm -hmm. bring into the film. Now, so. well, I wish you the best with it. Thank you it's very much. It's an interesting, uh, it sounds like an interesting story. Yeah. Tony Lip. Mm -hmm. Tony, uh, you um, started how many years ago? 35 years, you said? Something in? like that. Yeah, now you're only what? What year was Four. The Godfather? What was it, 60s? 70, no, it no, was, was 73. 73. Yeah. Were you in The Godfather? Yeah, that's when I started. What, were you, what role did you play in The Godfather? I, I played Luca Brazzani's uh, bodyguard. Oh, all right. I now, started as an extra. Yeah? Now you're in The Sopranos. How many of uh, I did the, the third season, the fourth season, and the fifth. And you were the a crime boss, you said, right? Right, the New York crime boss, correct. Now, you got a good memory. Yeah, well, listen, it says, I'm short, my memory's so short, too. Do you, that's an interesting, Soprano certainly has been winning all these kind of awards all Absolutely. over the place. Um, <clears throat> working with the people, tell me about The Sopranos, before you talk about this film. The Sopranos, the, the, the characters, yeah. they're all great guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I know most of these guys for many, many years. So working with them became very, very easy. You know, it was uh, like a piece of bread. You sit down, 
like you were sitting down in your own house. You don't even need a script. <laughs> no, really, you don't. You don't. No, you don't need a script. But, but, but the lines that we had, you had to say word for word, uh -huh. word for word. Uh -huh. Working uh, with um, uh, the, you know, we, we, when you're looking at it on television, it's a whole different, uh, different uh, mm -hmm. approach. But um, it's um, there's pros and cons about the Sopranos. I'm Italian. I'm full-blooded Italian. Um, I'm proud it, of you. Well, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> but you know, sometimes we look at the Sopranos and, and say to ourselves, it really is 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 um, is this portraying Italians the way they really are, okay? And, and you know, you know you had that conflict, the one where they won the, they didn't want them in the parade and they did want them in the parade. And you know, how do you feel? You're Italian, right? Listen, yeah. let me tell you something. Yeah. This is a movie. Yeah. What are movies about? Tell me. Well, uh, it's entertainment. Right, right, right. And that's all it is. Yeah. It doesn't put anything bad on the, on the Italians, and it doesn't put anything good on the Italians. But we, as Italians, know that we're the best. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, folks. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's interesting that I know it's a movie, but sometimes people actually believe it, you know? Some people See, they, do. Sometimes, you know, like when an Italian's in business and they're doing successful, they say, hey, he's got to be tied to the mob. If you're Jewish in your business, you say, it's a good businessman. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm That's saying? true. That's yeah. true. That's you know? true what you say. Yeah. But these people that think that way, they're not thinking right. Yeah. I mean, they, they create more problems that should not be created. But they, can I say what I want to say? Well, watch it now. <laughs> they're bull breakers. Yeah. That's I, all they are. Uh, well, that's it, folks. You're <laughs> Tony Rip from The Sopranos. And now you're in this movie. What part do you play in this movie, uh, The Signs of the Cross? I play a mob guy. Okay. No kidding. Something that's different. That's the only <laughs> roles I get. Different. You know what I mean? He plays a mob guy. But well, listen, uh, while, while we're on the air, yeah. I want you to keep in mind, October 24th, there's a book coming out called Shut Up and Eat. It's a book that I put together. Yes. I have most of The Sopranos. It's all about Italian-American actors that were in a mob movie. I have their recipes Fabulous. and their life stories. Shut up and eat. So it's two books in one. That's great. Buy that book. Shut up and eat. Yes. All right, folks, and I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I talk about it. Shut up and eat. Shut up and eat, huh? Well, uh, good luck with your film. Thank it you sounds to be a pretty interesting film, and I uh, always wanted to meet the guy well, from one of the guys from The Sopranos. It was a pleasure meeting okay, you. Okay, okay. It was good talking uh, to you. Nice talking to you, too. Shut up and eat, folks. That's the uh, name of the book coming out in October. You're watching the Sam Lasan Show, and we're on location here at 2005. Pogodon Film Festival, and uh, we'll see you next time. This has been a Samsung production.